Team, buddies, pals, Irvin. How you doing? Welcome back to another video. Now, I'm not in my office. I'm in the front room and I've been hammering doom in the background there for the last couple of hours. Anyway, I thought I'd take a break and talk to you guys about flies. My fly box. Talk to you guys about my box. What's in my box? What's in Alex's box? I said box way too many times here. Come here. Come here. Oh, hello. Hello. Irvin? Say hello to everyone at home. So this week I'm going to take you through what's in my hip pack, primarily what's in my fly boxes, and just give you guys a peek in there. Let's get to it. Okay, so. Fish pond hip pack. Really loving this thing. It's completely waterproof. Totally submersible, and um, yeah, I'm digging it, digging it. As usual, I've always got knifey hanging off the back of that for, you know, cutting sticks and even stuff like that. Uh, just real handy to have a knife when you're on the river in New Zealand. It's just, yeah, handy thing to have. Then, always have my, uh, my rising forceps, really good. The thing I like about these guys is this big holes. So you've got your big thumb hole, and uh, that way you never get your thumb. You know when you get your thumb caught in there and it just makes you angry? Never have that anymore. Not with these rising ones. So they're awesome. Really, really good quality stuff. So they live in there, like so. Oh yeah. Have my trash fish for spare line and that kind of stuff. Have that hanging off there. And uh, that guy just slips in there like that. Perfect. And then in the front here, I've got my rig keeper, freshly uh, freshly cleaned up today uh, for my rigs and droppers and bits and pieces in there. Split shot, tons of split shot, always handy for just we need to add some weight in there. And what else have I got in there? Some some old line. And um, oh, this is just a. What is this? Oh, it's like a little Velcro thingy, so if I have to break the rods down just to walk home or bash through some bush or whatever like that, you can just get that and uh, kind of Velcro it around your rods and keep all your pieces together. That's pretty handy. Now, inside, got my lanyard. If you're interested in uh, what goes on here in my lanyard, I'll leave you a link uh, up here or up here, up here. And you can have a look at how I've got my lanyard set up. I've got an old muesli bar. I've got all my um, indicator material. So this is just uh, different colored sheep's wool, a pair of scissors, and then the big and small tubing from the New Zealand, New Zealand Strike Indicator Company. Again, interested in that, links below. Down there in the description somewhere, scroll down, you'll find the link. Go there, have a look at that. Then I've got some tapered leaders ranging from 9 foot to 3x, 11 foot to 3x, 9 foot to 4x, 9 foot to 3x, 14 foot to 3x, 11 foot to 3x. You get the idea. That's all the scientific angler stuff, really, really good stuff. So that pretty much covers me and clients for pretty much any situation I come across up here. And then I can always add bits of tippet to that and lengthen them out, whatever I need to do. And I keep that in this little waterproof Ziploc bag because that packaging is actually recyclable, biodegradable. It gets wet, falls to pieces. Brilliant stuff. Well done, scientific anglers. I've got some lube, you know, for those long days with Gareth in the, in the river. No, it's for the, uh, it's, it's for the lip. The lip for the zip on here and my backpack. Lube it up every now and then, it's good stuff. I've uh, got some old glow bugs, which I don't need just yet. Some more glow bugs, which I don't need yet. Aha! Lollies. Got some lollies. Good old lollies. Fly boxes. I've got this one, I've got this one, I've got this one, I've got this one, and I've got this one. Now, is that too many fly boxes? I'm inclined to say yes, but we'll go through them, then maybe you won't judge me so harshly. Some more glow box. Okay, sweet. So, my main fly box is this one here. This has my Irvin, stop that. So, this has my nymphs and kind of bigger, fluffier dry flies. Well, as you can see, everything in here is basically small and brown, small and green, small and red, small and black, 
small and hair and coppery kind of natural colors and then different variations and sizes of that so these are kind of like 16 very slightly weighted kind of yeah just about weighted in reds and browns and some greens and a bit of black and then we're kind of coming through to like size 14s slightly weighted 12 some 10s some greens some browns some blacks some reds and then kind of as we're coming down through here we're getting into like some 101s some stonefly stuff single heavy stuff into some brown doubles double tungsten a bit heavier a bit heavier and then right down here to some like simon's ugly double tungsten heavy want to get down in some heavy fast water kind of gigs and here we've kind of got some some wimpers, some cicadery stuff which I didn't use much this year. Some stimulators, some blowflies, some Chernobyls from Cat 3. You know, just kind of generic-y kind of stuff. Got some royal wolves going on in here. We've got a big old indicator in there and then some, some worms. Some good old San Juan worms. Some weighted, some not weighted. Um, we've got some stimulator stuff going on in here, some blowflies in here, and then some random stuff in here. So this box here is more of your kind of smaller dry fly box, unweighted, and some smaller, smaller, smaller stuff. So these are your size 16s and 14s, tricky situations, dead search from Cat 3, just mayfly imitations, that kind of stuff. Got a couple of beetles in there, and got some size 12 mayfly imitations in there. Some unweighted stoneflies here, and just some lace moths, some random nymphs down there. Don't think I ever use those. Some small kind of mayfly nymphs up here, some unweighted pheasant tails, some caddis, some more caddis, white caddis, some more pheasant taily stuff, some more hair and coppery stuff there. A lot of this stuff I haven't actually used for ages, I guess carry it around, but I'll get around to using it, I'm sure. All right, granddad's fly box. So what have we got going on in here? I've got some big heavy stonefly stuff. I've got some copper wallops in here, which is just some good weighty kind of dropper flies. I've got some heavy stuff, double tungsten stuff in here. Some more kind of soft hackly caddis stuff. Some copper johns, some small pheasant taily stuff. Some really small 16s, 18s. I call this the trip wire. Good brown trout fly that. And then some small size 16 kind of yorks in there. Some caddis some red kind of copper johnny and small stuff some soft hackles peacock pointers here really good stuff some more brown things some more soft hackles some more soft hackles with beads and then there's a few kind of parachute atoms in like a size 12 there all right in this little guy here i've just got some very random small little buggy things just some real kind of like nothing flies just some tricky stuff some little more little soft hackles in here just in case i get to like you know those tricky fish and I'm going through everything in my fly box. In here there's a couple of little humpies, got some dad's favourites in here which is like another mayfly imitation, that kind of stuff. And then in here, this is my streamer box. So in here I've got all kinds of stuff. Olive woolly buggery kind of things here, this little brown woolly bugger thing here. Had a great day on that with uh, my buddy Jeff at the beginning of the season in really kind of chocolatey water. I uh, hope I never lose that fly because it's the only one I've got. Got some intruder style flies in here. Really, really cool looking stuff with a stinger fly. You know, this kind of stuff. And then some crayfish patterns, some more intrudery stuff, some articulated big things here, and some smelt flies, and that's about that. Right, so what I'll do now is I'm gonna pull 10 flies from all of these boxes, and they'll be the 10 flies I probably use the most out of all those ones I've just kind of gone through there. Okay, fly number one. This guy here, Royal Wolf. So this is pretty much my go-to prospecting kind of dry droppery fly. It floats real well, holds up a nymph really, really well, and catches fish, man. They like to eat it. This one here is from NZ Fishing Flies. Tied on a barbless hook, looks and does the job. Okay, next, this guy right here. This is um, a size 14 dead cert from Cat3. Just catch so many fish on this, it's brilliant. Little mayfly pattern in olive, and just, oh, it's just so good. So good. Hopefully that's coming out and you can see what that's all about, but that's a wicked, wicked fly. And then, and then, this is a little size 16 tricky situation. Game from Cat 3 and just gets nobbled. Not much will refuse one of these, to be fair. Okay, on to nymphs. This is the old 101, just a really good stonefly imitation. Rubber legs, slim profile, sinks quick and 
catches so many fish, man. Like, it's such a good fly. It's pretty much my go-to kind of dropper fly. Caddis, little caddis jobby. Real simple, real caddisy. Barber's hook. This one's from End of Fishing Flies, and uh, been using it more and more recently. And it's a, it's a really good caddis imitation. It's got a little brass bead on there, and um, yeah, does the job. Catches fish, looks good, and um, on a barber's hook, which you know I like. Okay, let's get serious. Soft tackles. Anyone that knows my videos knows I like a soft tackle, and this has been deadly this year. First year I've used them and really, really good. Barber's hook, real nice profile, nice looking pattern. This is for ends of fishing flies again. Does them weighted and it does them unweighted and I use both and they both catch fish. This has firmly become one of my uh, favorite flies this season. Really, 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 really good. All right, Old Faithful, Old Faithful. Just a size 14, hair and copper, real simple real good this is a gunmetal bead i also caught plenty of fish with a gold bead as well um this is just what i pulled out the box can't not have this in my fly box again cat three simple real effective and this guy here this is just a york i think so it's basically just a real plain pheasant tail with a couple of like, sparkly legs and a copper bead don't really need to say much more size 14 size 16 it's just a go-to fly and then this is sticking with the pheasant tail vibe. Pretty much um, just the same fly as I showed you, but the only difference on this one is got a little, and if you can see on there, it's got a little UV flash. And um, I find if you're fishing water with a little bit of color, or it's really good, you know, a bit deeper and a bit darker, fish just tend to dig this. A little bit of UV flash, I think, helps them zone in on it and just, yeah, catch a heap of fish on that. Lastly, this is a little size 16 pole position which is again from Cat3 and it's just a little pheasant tail variation with a red bead and a little bit of flash in it. Great brown trout fly. Caught a lot of brown trout on this. And sometimes it's the difference between getting them to eat and not. Got them in a 14, fishing mostly in a 16. Wicked fly. Right, so there you have it. They are my pretty much top 10 flies. I kind of vary from those a little bit when I have, you know, different situations or, you know, fussy fish or whatever but that's pretty much if I had just those 10 flies in my box I'd be pretty happy. I hope that kind of answers a couple of questions or just you know satisfies your curiosity a little bit. If I had to tell you anything it would be small and brown, small and green, small and black, small and red and then if they're not working smaller and browner, smaller and redder, smaller and greener, smaller and blacker and then just making sure you're getting the flies where they need to be you know making sure you're fishing with enough weight so those flies are getting down into the zones so those fish are seeing them you'd be surprised sometimes how much weight you've actually got to fish just to get the flies anywhere near the fish all right i'll see you guys after the weekend and uh, i'll do another video so until then stay sane if you're in lockdown like i am just try and keep your shit together don't lose your mind just yet We've got like another three weeks to go. If you're not in lockdown, well, lucky you, man. Get out for a fish, because I'd love to. Give me a thumbs up. Drop me a comment in the comment section below. And boop, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I guess I'll see you after the weekend. Don't go mad. See you next week.